you guys liked my first video about identifying common plants, here's part two. This plant right here is called Physalis. It's in the nightshade family, and it's got leaves very similar to potatoes or tomatoes. It grows these beautiful yellow flowers, and when those yellow flowers are pollinated, they turn into this paper lantern here that gives it this other common name, which is paper lanterns. And inside here, there's going to be a berry that's ready when it's yellow or orange. There's all sorts of different colors of them, but if they grow in this paper lantern, you can bet that it's safe to eat. This plant and variations of it grow in almost all 50 states, and the berries are so delicious. You would not believe the flavors that come out of this little berry. This here is white clover. It's extremely common in the United States. As you can see, it's got typical three leaves as clover normally does, and the entire plant is edible. These can be tossed into a salad and they look absolutely beautiful, and they can be brewed into a coffee substitute, and they can also be dried and smoked as a tobacco alternative. This extremely beautiful plant is common honeysuckle, or Japanese honeysuckle. The leaves grow opposite from one another, and so that just means that they grow up across from each other on the stem. Unfortunately, I don't have any flowers out right now, but you can check out some of my other videos if you want to see what the flowers look like if you're not familiar with it. But the flowers are edible, and they smell so fantastic, and you can make all sorts of different stuff out of them, including jelly and tea. This very common flower right here is called Black-Eyed Susan. Not all parts of the plant is edible, so take caution, but the roots can be brewed into a tea and used medicinally to treat common colds and flu symptoms, but use caution because some people have allergic reactions to it. This right here is not an herbaceous plant, but it is a mulberry tree. So if you know how to identify this, you can leave them to grow large, and then they grow berries on them just like blackberries. Now, you can tell it's mulberry because it grows leaves that are complete and they have no lobes. It has, grows leaves that have lobes on just one side, and it grows leaves that have lobes on both sides, like this. There are three varieties of mulberry in the United States. There's red mulberry, which is the native one, and then white mulberry and paper mulberry. White mulberry has no fuzz on the top or the bottom. Red mulberry has fine fuzz on the bottom, and paper mulberry has hairs on both sides of the leaf and produces no or very few edible berries. So you only want to let white or red mulberry grow. This beautiful shrub right here is called Chickasaw Plum. It grows these beautiful small plums on it that are absolutely delicious. This plant doesn't get much more than, say, six or ten feet high at the most. The new growth has a stem that's red, and it's got sort of banded bark, sort of like other plum varieties, sort of like cherry varieties, and overall other prunus varieties. Here's another tree that I'd like to point out, just because of its vast range. This is a Mexican plum tree. Now, it produces an absolute abundance of plums, all over this tree, there's groups of plums like this. There's thousands and thousands of them. And like I said, they're not that great to eat fresh, but a lot of people make a lot of stuff out of them. And it does grow in a lot of places, so that's why I'm pointing this out today. And it produces a whole bunch of flowers in the spring. It's one of the first trees to flower in the springtime, and it smells absolutely delicious. My wife thinks it smells like, my wife thinks it smells like fresh tortillas. And Perhaps we're thinking that might be why they call it a Mexican plum tree, but I doubt it. Probably because it grows in large parts of Mexico. But it is a nice tree to have. This right here is a plant that we should all know. This is Himalayan blackberry. It's the common blackberry variety that grows in the United States. They come from the Himalayas, and that's why, what it got its namesake from. It grows typically with five leaves, sometimes three. And it has thorns and absolutely delicious berries. I had this in one of my other videos. This is a wild grapevine. Some people call it muscadine, but there's a chance that this isn't actually muscadine because there's about seven or eight varieties of wild grapes in Oklahoma. Here's what it looks like, and I pointed out on another video what porcelain berry looks like. Porcelain berry grows a cluster of flowers or a cluster of berries. These grow in droops like you would see a typical grapevine. Since we've mentioned quite a few trees, I just wanted to point out this one. This one is called a post oak tree. It's in the white oak family, and you know that because there's a few families of oak trees, two of which are white oak and red oak. Now, the white man came to the States and had a round projectile, like a musket ball, and the red man had a pointed projectile, 
like an arrowhead. Now, if the leaves have pointed lobes on them, then it's a red oak, like the red man's projectile. And the white oak family has rounded lobes, like the white man's projectile. White oak is one of the most rot-resistant woods there is, and one post, when treated properly, can last over 80 years, and every species of oak produces an acorn that's edible. I made another video about how to process the acorns to make them edible, and I'll make more in the future. This tree right here has a pretty vast range itself. This right here is what's known as an Osage orange, or it's also known as bodark, which means bow wood in French, because this was the much preferred wood by Native Americans to make bows out of. Now, these fruits here were megafauna food. So the mammoths ate them and uh, other megafauna. This was good food for them, but they're not eaten by many things anymore. Sometimes you'll find a squirrel has ripped one up to get the seeds out of it, but they're not uh, a big food source for a lot of animals. Uh, you can eat these. You can eat the seeds and roast them. Uh, you can also slice these and cook them or dry them like chips. They are pretty okay tasting, not bad. This shrub right here is an elderberry shrub. It's got opposite leaflets and teeth on the margin. Once you learn how to identify this one, you really can't miss it. It's got a very distinctive look to it. Here's the clusters of flowers, and they'll produce an abundance of berries that have a absolute plethora of medicinal and edible uses. But the berries have to be cooked first, but they do have a delicious flavor. This plant here is called bull thistle. It's got these beautiful wrinkled leaves that look sort of like a castor bean leaves. It's got these absolutely gorgeous white flowers and their fruits are very beautiful as well. You do not want to touch this plant. It is not edible and it's got a bunch of these spines on the stem. Now what these are are little pockets and they've got a bunch of acid on the inside. So when you break one of them it releases that acid and gets all over your skin and burns and leaves blisters and it really burns horribly. This tree right here is known as sassafras. Now it's got a bunch of historic uses, but make sure you read up on sassafras before you decide to use it. Now like mulberry, it grows leaves that are complete with no lobes, lobes on one side and lobes on both sides. Here's one, for example, that has no lobes at all. And here are ones with lobes on both sides. Now when you smell the new growth, the way that you can definitely tell that it's sassafras is because it smells really, really rich of citrus. It also smells a lot like root beer. And this is one of the original flavorings in root beer. The root bark would be taken off and then it would be brewed or extracted and then used as a major, major component in root beer. Now, people still use this to make old-fashioned root beer, but it's been refined and so it's uh, less dangerous. People say that there's carcinogens in it. So like I said, read up on it and be very careful. Kind of looks like a dinosaur's foot. This plant right here is called yucca. It's also known as St. Adam's needle. Now, it's got a big flowering stock that's coming up right now. I wish the flowers were open so I could show you, but I'll try and get a video in when they are flowering. It's called St. Adam's needle because right on the inside, on the new growth, you can pluck that the newest leaf up and it was historically used as a needle for sewing because it's so sharp and so stiff. This plant is really useful for people that are trying to find old homesteads, old home sites to try and look for some really cool artifacts. Because um, if you find this out in a field or you find this randomly somewhere, chances are there was a family dwelling there at some point or another because this plant was so useful to people of old. This beautiful plant right here is hard to miss after you know what it is. It's called Alabama Supplejack. And the strong stems of this plant used to be used for basketry and it can also be used as cordage or any kind of wicker work, really. There's a number of medicinal uses for this plant, but I'm just gonna leave that alone uh, because there's very little research done on it, and so I don't wanna get anybody hurt. It's getting dark and it's starting to rain here, so I'm gonna go inside. Feel free to check out my other videos if you want more content like this. I've got new stuff coming out all the time, so if you follow, there's destined to be something, hopefully, that piques your interest. Uh, and go ahead and fill my comment section with uh, video ideas, stuff that you want to see, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. I've got a big family, and uh, so I've got a lot of responsibilities, but uh, I just love doing this, and I'll come out with as much as I can.
Thank you for watching.